Sunday Papers. Sunday Papers. Sunday Papers. Sometimes, maybe we could do some shrooms. Read all about it! Read all about it! Back after a week off, it's Sunday Papers. Look at us. Here's to your credit. Look at this hotel coffee. Hotel there you coffee. Go. Mike Gibbons in a hotel in his hometown. What's sweeter than that? There's something really magic about being in a hotel in the city you live in. No, I shouldn't say this out loud, uh, but I, I don't think Netflix listens to our podcast. Uh, I'm local, but Netflix, this is why Netflix is also broke. Um, they're like, they treat the talent and everybody so well. So we're nominated for an Emmy and the Emmy Awards. The Emmy Awards take place over four nights or three, but there's a the previous, the early weekend, and I've been here before for karaoke, but some of the big awards are on this weekend, but they're called the Creative Emmys. I don't know why, but Saturday and Sunday this weekend, and then next weekend is the Emmys that everyone will watch at home, and then they'll air this one next weekend also on Hulu, I think, or FX, so... Anyway, that's why we're here. But Netflix then goes, hey, everybody, thank you so much. You know, Netflix takes the Emmys very seriously. And so they go, so with your Emmy nomination comes Hotel for Two Nights at the JW Marriott, which is right above the awards here across from the old Staples Center. And uh, you get uh, a flight, a like, you know, a premium economy flight round trip. And you get, you know, four Ubers to take you to and from and and all this stuff. And I was like, and meanwhile, that's only for out of town people. And I was like, sure. Yeah, <laughs> great. And then and then I decided, let me see how much I can push it. And all this past week, I was in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. I'm like, yeah, fly me in from Halifax, Nova Scotia. And I was totally, totally waiting to be like, uh, we see your home address yeah. is in Santa Monica. And they're yeah. like, you got, and then I go, and then fly me back to Nashville a week later. And they're like, okay. No. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. It's Sweet. always good to take advantage of that. Um, and, and also when they fly you, uh, well, you didn't get business class, but, uh, it's still, no, I didn't, still but good. I will say I did need, I was out of town. I wasn't here. So it's not like I, I lied. And I did. I was going. Then Wait, so you're not after. explaining why you're nominated for an Emmy. Tell the people so they can know. Oh, right, right, right. Sorry. So the roast, the Tom Brady roast, it happened yeah. at the end of the window. That's why there's usually it's like a year later. Here I here you are. Nom like everyone usually when you watch the Emmys, you're like, oh, yeah, that was this year. You know, it's like a year ago or more sometimes. So and, it, um, so if you win, who accepts? Who goes on stage? Well, I just saw on the TV behind me, I just saw Michigan getting killed, and they interviewed Tom Brady. And Tom Brady's in Cleveland because his job starts tomorrow announcing for the NFL. Oh, for Fox, right. Dallas, Dallas at Cleveland. And so uh, it won't be Tom. I don't know. I don't know who's showing up, to tell you the truth. I do okay. know Jeff Ross is there, so maybe it's Jeff. Could be Jeff. Jeff, you know, look, he's, he's the roast master. He's very I good just, at these things. I just sent him a joke that was written by Jerron Horton, who was a great um, joke writer for us, staff writer on the on the roast. And one of the jokes we wrote that like, because Jeff will probably do red carpet and stuff. I, he can't do this in his acceptance speech if he's the one and if we win. But uh, the, the joke was, um, we deserve an Emmy just for getting Kim Kardashian to show up for a white athlete. <laughs> 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 I love that one. That's good. Um, all right, so how was Nova Scotia? It was good. I'll just finish by saying, last time, when I, when I won an Emmy, it, there was zero false modesty. It was a group, a group of us for Carpool Karaoke, the primetime special. We all knew, I mean new to our bones, that we were going to lose because we were up against Beyonce's Lemonade. Also, no one really knew what Carpool Karaoke kind of like. It was just getting its footing. So we were drinking they, you can bring drinks to your seats. We were drinking totally unprepared, and they called our name. It was shocking. And then when you win, 
you're shuttled off stage, which you see on TV, you're shuttled off stage, and then there's huge press, like right backstage. So immediately you're kind of like in this press conference scenario, and they're like, what should we do with you? And Ben Winston, who did give the acceptance speech, the EP of, uh, of Record and Show, he... Um, then like, we had no idea what to say. So at one point with the press, he's like, uh, uh, Gibby, do you have any, uh, anything, uh, anyone we need to thank or anything? And I'm like, uh, I guess. And I literally go, I guess we should thank the Asians for karaoke. And he's like, okay, we're done. We're done. And I was never asked again for my thoughts. Ah, that's hilarious. Um, yeah. yeah. So, uh, where is the script? I got us. Uh, there it is. Um, Nova Scotia was amazing. Well, first of all, we both have had uh, sort of wild uh, ex- lives all over the map. I Crazy flew in at 10 end p.m. Of the last summer. night. I've been away for, a, it'll be a month uh, by the end of next week. I'll have been home for three days in, in an entire month as of the wow. end of next week. And uh, yeah, it's been hard because I just bought my Mustang and I literally bought it three days before I went away and it's just been sitting there, not being driven, getting dirty, probably getting scratched up. Yeah. Uh, your, pre- your Prius, you didn't really mind it that much. No, that was fine. Exactly. Um, but uh, no, I can't. I'm going to get home on Monday and uh, throw a move on the wife, get shut down, try again on Tuesday. Yeah. And then uh, get access, and then I'll leave town again on Thursday. Get her in that Mustang, man. Get her juices oh, full. Oh, I'll get a hand job in the Mustang for sure. At least from yourself. <laughs> right? In the back seat. <laughs> um, yeah, right, so, so did you find your grandmother's home? Wasn't that the mission of this trip? We did. We did. Well, I and then I, I went on like one of those geolocation nerds. I went on Google Earth and I had found it before we went. And so um, it was great. Nova Scotia is a pretty amazing place. Yeah. Now, I, I bet some listener will call in with a correction. It is wild. Like, so it's very much like Scotland, which I know now sounds like the stupidest thing I've ever said. It's called Nova Scotia. But um, it's it has highlands. We stayed at one of North America, North America's only whiskey distillery, uh, which is also an inn. And that was in this Highlands area. And, and the coast is just absolutely rough and ama- and wild and amazing. So the Scots settled there, but the Scots didn't settle there because they're like, Hey, we're looking for a place that looks like home. Well, I actually heard the history of the Island. And, you know, of course there's shameful stuff of displacing, you know, uh, the, uh, natives and all that stuff. But, and also like England trying to get a stronghold and trying to beat the French to settling there and all that stuff. But it is wild. Like new England, you know, I went to school at a, at a high school called Berkshire in the Berkshires. It looks like England. It's amazing. And Scotland uh, looks exact. Nova Scotia looks ex- exactly like Scotland. And am I missing something? Like that's a coincidence. Maybe the, the plates separated and they actually used to be connected. I think and it, now it's yeah, the closest I think it was. part. Right, right. I think the plates separated. It's just like um, uh, Asia... And and Africa used to be connected. I mean, if the boat went to Florida, Florida would be called New England. We'd be doing jokes about New England, man. Yeah. And but it wouldn't be the same at all. It would be they'd all be <laughs> they'd probably die. Maybe they did do that, and they all died of sun exposure. Wait. So they, they, your grandmother's house is it still standing, or you found the site where it was? Well, I went up there when I was in like seventh grade. My dad hadn't been since before that. So I stayed in the house that was there. And I think that is the house. She was, she came to America a hundred years ago. Uh, Exactly a hundred years ago. She came in uh, 1924. So she was living there. I, I forget how young she was, probably late teens. And she moved to Boston. Um, but... It's the same house, I believe, on this farm. Oh, why did you stay there? Like, was it a guest house? No, her sister stayed. So a lot of these immigrant stories is uh, the oldest sister, 
The parents died. Yeah. Her mother died young. Parents died. Oldest sister, Agnes. Agnes then had a gentleman caller uh, who was interested. And then the writing is on the wall like, you bitches got to get out. The other yeah. sisters. Yeah, yeah. And then my grandmother didn't talk to Agnes for 50 years. Wow. I know. So when I went up there, that was the trip. I didn't realize any of this. My dad just told me that. I remember my uh, grandmother left home, you know, probably, you know, as a teenager, came to America from, from Ireland. And, you know, there was no like phone calls back home. I think there was like letters once in a while. And so she was in America for about 50 years. And then when she got older, my mother took her parents back to Ireland and they got to this fucking stone house that had had 12 kids in it. And they walk up and like you said, the oldest sister usually stayed behind and everybody else left. The older sister was your social security. She was your old age plan. They, they, she would take care of you. And so the oldest sister was there. My grandmother hadn't seen her in 50 years and she walks up to the front door knocks the door opens they look at each other for the first time and the sister said tis you and my grandmother went tis <laughs> and then punched her right in the cunt no no jesus no <laughs> hug nothing my mother was like it was the craziest moment and then they just came in and had tea <laughs> tis tea Tis. Tis. <laughs> Tis still a cunt? Tis. Um, yeah. Well, that's cool, man. That sounds like a great trip. And then... Oh, uh, and so Boston, you, and also I dropped Livy off in Boston. And right. It was just great to be back in Boston. Right? But one quote, funny story about... Very quick, having nothing to do with anything. I'm going through the uh, security, the most Boston, ruddy-faced, overweight craziest Boston accent, which I can't even do. And he's there and I go up and usually all I do is I point toward my hip. They all know what that means. Yeah. And they go, okay, yeah, you're going to go to the one where the thing moves around you, like in the giant phone booth, because you'll just go off on the metal detector right. and all that. And it's much easier. So that's all you usually do. And also keep in mind, there's kind of like a bit of a privacy issue, like especially, I imagine, I don't give a shit, but if, like an older woman, you know, it's like, you don't, don't yell to everybody that I have a hit. You know what I mean? Like, that's my business. I'm yeah. going to go over there now. Who knows what parts you have in you, right? Uh -huh. So anyway, I go to the guy and he's sitting there and it's, it's packed. It's, cr it's very crowded. And I like point to my hip and he's like, oh, all right, we could try it anyway. And I'm like, uh, all right. And he's like, uh, and he goes, just one hip? And I'm like, actually, it's so like, I go, actually, it's two. He's like, two. <laughs> he started dying laughing. And he goes, ha, 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 no, man, you can't do this. You got to go over there. <laughs> well, I told you I got to Logan Airport one time, and they are not uber friendly at logan it's like you know the taxi commission is a union and they're in the pockets of the city so they fuck you if you want to take uber so i show up and i no signs and you literally have to walk past baggage down a hallway up an escalator across a bridge down an elevator to a parking lot and then walk across it so i walk out i don't know any of this so i walk out of the, the baggage to the curb and I make the mistake of asking a cop, I go, uh, can you tell me where the Uber is? And he just turns around, he looks at me and he goes, turn around, look at the sign, follow that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, welcome to Boston. The, the baggage carousel tour, we used one of those Ikea bags. We're taking Olivia to Northeastern and it like tore it. And the guy goes, oh, go up. Any torn bags, you know, if the carousel did it, they're responsible. Just go up. There's an office. So we go to the office and we go in and like, uh, and we're like, oh, we told, you know, the carousel tore the bag. We're told, it's like, yeah, honey, that's not a bag. 
That's not a suitcase. <laughs> and Olivia was just like, what the? I'm like, oh, Olivia, welcome to your next four years. This is the unfriendliest city in America. Right. The unfriendliest right. city in America. Now, we got to, uh, I stayed at Mary Fitzgerald's house uh, for the night yes. in Boston. She was so bummed that she missed you. I know that you guys, like, didn't sync up somehow. Yeah, but- she thought she, she was convinced she had COVID. Yeah. Which she probably didn't tell you guys. She didn't say a word about that. <laughs> And so we get there and then there was this, there, we're in Dorchester and, oh, yeah. it, and we get there and she's like, uh, my brothers are down at the park. It's called Walsh Park and it's where we grew up. We used to play football, basketball, sleigh riding, drinking beers. So it was the park is about to get leveled and turned into something. And it's been like this staple of the neighborhood forever. So we go down to the park and there's like a hundred dudes and they all got the same like buzzed haircut, the golf shirt, and uh, like just red faced and a hundred guys that are all extroverts, all A type dudes. They shake your hand, how you doing, pal? Good to see you. And then they're pointing at somebody else. Hey, Walsh, yeah, I'll catch up to you. like just fucking amazing totally. personalities. And yeah. but we pull up. And of course, there's no parking, so we find a spot that's like it's like seven eighths of a spot, and the bumper was just leaning into a driveway that was about twelve feet wide. Right. And a woman comes out and she goes, "You can't park there. You're hanging over my driveway. My son and my son-in-law are are coming home. How are they going to get in?" And she said, "The son and the son-in-law as an intimidation thing, you know." Yeah. And 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 she, and Mary Fitzgerald to her credit, the old Mary would have been in this woman's face and screaming out. Mary just went, "Okay, sweetheart." <laughs> and we just moved the car. And so we go up to Maine. It was Mary's 60th birthday. Happy birthday, Mary. Yes. And uh and we go up and and she's got uh, two sisters and three brothers and they're all up there and there's a bunch of people from her neighborhood and then all of our friends from our neighborhood Tom O'Neill is there the Dunskys are there the Malloys are there uh, Kim Stevens Carla Stevens and uh, uh, so it was just a riotous group this house had 10 bedrooms with big sweeping porches looking over the ocean, completely modernized. And the best part was in the, in the, the ground floor, there was a bunch of bookshelves and you pull at the side of one of the bookshelves and it opens up and it's a fucking speakeasy. It's got no. a bar, a poker table, a record player. It's plush. Uh, it, it, the house was insane. What's and the nearest city? York. Oh, so right. just uh, just below like a Gunquid and Wells. Sure. And so wow. uh, and we went in the ocean. It was fucking freezing, but everybody went in the ocean. And uh, and it then might we were, be the warmest time of year. Actually. Yeah, right? Isn't I think the it Gulf is. Stream? Yeah. And then we were playing charades and her brother, <laughs> Timmy, who is the dude who's just, you know, the vein is popping on the side of the head the entire time. Yeah. He's permanently flexed with tension. And, uh, and we're playing charade, running charades. <laughs> and the clue was, uh, or the answer was like, uh, uh, I, I can't remember what it is, but the clue he's giving is awful. Um, it, it just doesn't make any, it was a uh, killers of the flower moon. Is that what it was called? Sure. Yeah. Yes. And, and so he's going, he's pointing, he's trying to, he's, he's stabbing, he's shoot, and nobody's getting it. And then eventually he just leans forward and he starts poking his finger into his forehead, like hard enough to cause a bruise over and over. And we're going head, forehead, He's not trying brain, to say Indian. Skull. No, he goes, think. Think it had nothing to do with killer flowers. He was miming. Think. <laughs> I literally thought he was doing the dot on Asian Indians. <laughs> when he when I realized he was doing think as a mime, I Malloy was in our team. I physically fell off the couch and was doubled over, and I couldn't I couldn't play the rest of the round. I could not stop laughing. It was guy, so perfect. The guy. Think, what are you crazy? <laughs> Makes the circle around his ear like all the wrong, like it's sending you off the scent. Oh, oh my, my God. God. But it was just so much booze. 
And I imagine. Yeah, it was it was just I was only there for like two days because I had to fly out to Austin. But uh, no, I gave a speech. A I, I roasted the shit out of the family in the speech. Kinda, oh, that's great. Kind of killed. Oh, and, good. And Mary made a beautiful speech. Diane made a great speech. Uh, it was really, it was really nice. Just such a great family. The Fitzgeralds are amazing. I can't believe I was in that region of the country, and uh, and then, but I was up in Canada, so I missed it. But I mean, yeah, uh, Nova Scotia is very close to Maine. I mean, there's a ferry. Yeah. Well, it's also it's about six. It's about a six hour drive from Nova yeah. Scotia to where they were. They're Southern Maine. Uh, and, and then yeah. so I finished. So we do. We were at the party. I'm I'm out till two in the morning, and then I had to wake up at five a. I slept for three hours. I took an Uber from Maine to Logan Airport, which was two hours. Jesus. I got a guy who won't stop talking the entire way. I was planning on sleeping. I get on my flight. I land in Austin. I got to go do a guy's podcast, and then I get to. Uh, and then I get downtown, and I do two shows at the Mothership last night, and the second show. I was fucking done. I had wow. nothing left in the tank. And then you can't even relax today because we got this goddamn thing. I got um, the rest one, of the day. One thing I'll say about Boston, so I'll probably talk more about it next week, but the move in, Boston can't handle this move in, this influx of a quarter million students. Quarter of a million, and, you know, yeah. And, you know, Starro Drive, all of them, they go on there with their U-Hauls and they're warned to death not to. There's all these funny videos and there's literally a verb for it. It's called Starrowing, where they get caught under the bridges or they smash into them because the U-Hauls, the trucks yeah, yeah, are yeah. too tall. I know that exact spot, right. Yeah, and so they all, there's really funny videos on it. Um, but it's like Boston... It, couldn't even handle cars like you're saying it's like i mean i think they were like wait what what do these horseless carriages do are you fucking kidding me like <laughs> wait what and it's like and yeah and you know the street has to be wide enough for par parking you gotta park them like the, we can't handle this and yeah. then they can't even handle that it's the craziest it literally was a city built for horses and then all of a sudden what's this airbus you're talking about <laughs> Forget it. And that's why it's like, well, where are we going to put the airbuses? And that's why Logan Airport is the greatest afterthought ever. It's not convenient. You need tunnels to get to it. It's terrible. Yeah, it's an it's awful airport. It's really my least up. favorite airport in the country. It's terrible. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, I forgot. Uh, I just want to tell you one of the jokes I said. Mary went to Wellesley, and she had these friends. And I said, you know, when I was in, I went, went to BU, and she was at Wellesley. And we met through her boyfriend, and I immediately fell in love with Mary. I was like, we're going to be friends the rest of our life. So I used to go to parties at Wellesley, and all of her friends were like, you know, new wave haircuts and cool clothes and they're listening to the smiths and all this music i never heard and they were all super hot and i was like mary this is a gold mine and she's like they're all lesbians and i was <laughs> i go even schroeder and she goes especially schroeder <laughs> and schroeder was there and i said that in my, yeah, in my of toast course. oh that's great <laughs> um so, uh, I got my, I should bet we didn't, we weren't here last week. Th sorry. We missed you guys. We put up the first episode ever. Tons of people wrote in that they really enjoyed it. And, uh, it was a walk down memory lane. It was a very weird moment in time because COVID yeah. was literally coming out on our first episode. Um, and then, uh, my special is out currently has 250,000 views, which is like so far beyond where we, th where I thought we would be right now. But, uh, I got to think thank Sophie commented on it somewhere. I believe oh my she asked god. me, she's like, can I comment on it? Oh my God. I'm so, my daughter was horrified by the special, you know, who wants to hear about their parents having sex ever in any way? Sophie Not didn't. She checked out right at the end. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And Good. that's what she Good. commented on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she's no, like, there's... I can't, I can't hear about her like that. No, there's 2,500 comments. I've been trying to get through as many as I can, but I'm so far behind. Uh, Good but for you, man. That's I, congratulations. I'll t thank you. I, I'm really proud of the special. The comments have been like 99.8% positive. People are saying this is the best special they've heard in five years and blah, blah. It just it felt, um, it's not the numbers or I, I obviously will lose. I'm losing a ton of money on this special, but I just needed to put it out. But I got to thank the... Uh, Ari Shafir has been 
unbelievable. He texts me twice a day like, dude, you got to move this to here. And, you know, the donations tab should be over there. And like he, he leading up to it, he told me everything about sizing the thumbnails on the videos. Like he's been amazing. And then obviously like Joe Rogan having me on and Corolla and Shane Gillis. And oh, Ki- dude, that's great. Kill Tony comes out tomorrow. Um, uh, Tom Segura, Mark Marin, David Cross, like just goes on and on. All these people, Jay Olkerson. Um, and then all the comics that I asked to shout it out that got on social media and said, Hey, my friend's special is out. Will you watch? It was just, it was like such a fucking swelling of support. I was very touched by it. Oh dude. Good for you. You yeah. deserve it. Thanks man. Did you watch it? Yes, of course. Well, I also gave you tons of notes on one of the early iterations of oh, it. Oh, right, right. That's right. Come on now. I still have the yeah. pages in my notebook. The funny thing is that in a notebook, I really should have the pages, but I didn't plan on talking about this, but they're in my apartment and I'll, I'll, be, I'll look down and I'll just be like, what the hell was I doing here? It was like, don't write about fucking your wife here. Write about that. And I'm like, what? I go, what? And you know, I didn't put a label like Greg's special notes. Like, I'm like, what was I talking about? That's hilarious. Yeah. Um, all right. We're 26, 27 minutes in. Let's get to the logo. Jane S friend of the show. Jane S made the cool one from toy story. I don't know if it's one or two or three, but there it is. Very good. Yeah. It's one of them. Uh, Ray Maslanka did a fucking awesome song this Thank week. You, Thank Ray. you, Ray. Uh, and don't forget, listen at the end of the episode. You can hear the whole song, which is worth it. Um, also, we're still soliciting new songs. We got a few in, but we could definitely use some more uh, corrections. This is from Carol, who says, uh, you, for the number nine, Garfield, you said that he loves spaghetti. <laughs> While it's true that Garfield loves pretty much all food, including donuts and spaghetti, his famously favorite food is lasagna. Not looking forward to you guys taking a week off, but at least I'll be able to hear the other comedy podcasts you're on. How about Mike does a podcast junket to promote your special as well? Yeah, man. Why don't you get out there and support me? Yeah. What what do I do? I go on other podcasts? Yeah, go on uh, Craig Kilborn's. Okay, great. Uh, this is from Andy, who says, I'm sure you get a lot of these. Ted Lasso is an Apple TV original, not Disney Plus, but I agree it's gotten sappy as fuck, so I could see the confusion thinking it's Disney. And then Andy said, I guess you thought Jackson Hole was the highest elevation in the country? No, I didn't say that. Well, this guy is uh, sent you some heights. Revelstoke, where's that? I think that's Alaska. I think the highest. Oh no, peak- no, he's right. No, no, he's measuring vertical. It was vertical, obviously. Okay. Because the base of Breckenridge is higher than Jackson Hole's Peak, or no. right around the same height. But so, uh, I did think it was the tallest vertical in the U.S. And he, I see Big Sky, Snowmass. Snowmass is so like intermediate. Tell you right, it's that big. I don't know. I the other ones skied- are Canadian. I've skied Telluride and Snowmass. Which ones have you skied? I've skied Whistler, Telluride, Snowmass, Big Sky, uh, all of them except Revelstroke. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a life. What a life Mike Gibbons has had. You know, you've traveled well, I got everywhere. I've skiing a little bit. But uh, you've done it all, man. People must be so jealous when they hear what you do every week. <laughs> Um, uh, and then we got uh, this guy, Tyler, said that um, Dustin Hoffman played the character with autism in Rain Man, not Tom Cruise. Well, I don't remember saying that wrong, but maybe I did. Um, taps can be traced back to adaptations of Napoleon's favorite bugle call, Pour attendre les feux. And... Uh, but seriously, it was so much fun time traveling back to episode one. I popped on episode two, a.k.a. the one where Greg decided to stop to start watching The Wire. And uh, all right. So tour dates coming up. Uh, Mothership, if you're listening tonight, September 8th. Uh, actually, I think it's sold. Yeah, it's sold out. Sorry. 
Temecula next, uh, no, September 21st at the Montserrat Winery. I'll be in Alaska in Fairbanks September 25th to the 28th. Tulsa, October 10th through the 12th. Then I'll be in Tacoma, San Francisco, Cleveland, Atlanta, Janesville, Wisconsin, Nyack, Raleigh, Milwaukee, Vegas, Hollywood, Pittsburgh. Go to FitzDog.com. Get some tickets. Also, support for the podcast comes from Game Time. Game Time app. Before we go to Game Time, I just want to say I just Googled it. Number one, Jackson Hole, 41 Oh five, number two snowmass forty thirty three big sky forty sixteen four telluride at thirty eight thirty. So I'm I would guessing Revelstoke is in Alaska and I'm, and and Whistler is in Canada. So maybe what you're reading is the American. May, no, no, know. he had American ones higher. He had telluride and snowmass and big yeah. sky above Jackson. But this, all I'm saying is now it is debatable at the very least. Let's talk about game time. Let me call up the game time app. I love game time. I was going on to see if there were tickets to the Emmys tonight uh, on there. Here's what's no. great. You can go to concerts. You can go to sporting events. You can go to comedy shows, uh, plays, I everything. like the discover button, which yeah. I always press yeah. and talk about because it's like you can see what's going on in town. Like, look at this. Just in L.A. You ready? We got Lincoln Park. We got Raiders at Chargers. We got the Guardians, what a name, at the Dodgers. We have uh, the USC game, 49ers at Rams. Jelly Roll is tonight. Green Day is coming up next week. It's crazy. And and it's like, it's first of all, it's a great way to just find out what's playing. It's like right there in front yeah. of you. You can see what's coming up. And, you know, I, I just really believe, like, when it comes to spending your money, you can do stupid things like buying a Mustang or you can have real life experiences. And I, re- I honestly think like there is no joy better than going to see something live, sports or whatever. And, uh, and you remember it and it's a moment that you have with friends. Totally. So uh, game you time see reminds your, you to you do that. You see your seat view before you buy it. It's the lowest price guarantee. There's event cancellation protection, job loss protection. You know who's going to use a lot of the uh, event cancellation? This Oasis tour, I bet. Are Why? you kidding me? Why? Uh, everyone is the over under is like they make it three quarters oh, of a show. They fight so much. The Gallagher yes. brothers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They can't get along at all. But anyway, you and can I love see that it's the, the view from your seats, which is really cool. Yes. And it's so like cool. One we mentioned tap. it twice. You don't have to print. You don't have to transfer. You. It's just boom. You click it and you got it in your phone. You show it at the door. It's a piece of cake. And so, you don't have to guess. You don't have to guess what the final price is going to be. Guessing. They show you the all-in price, oh, unlike Jesus. all the other competitors. Yeah. So anyway, take the guesswork out of buying concert tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Papers for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code P A P E R S for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's game time. Looks like they there changed their little tagline. Look at that one. I yeah, thought you did that on your fancy, own. Fancy, fancy. All right, let's is get t- some crinkly. I got, a little, you got, some I got a little paper bag. Oh. Ready? Yep. It's time for the front page. Oh, the presidential debate. It is. It was not going to happen. It's happening. Kamala Harris and Donald Trump will take the stage Tuesday night in the only planned debate between them. Though the Harris and Trump campaigns clashed over debate procedures in recent weeks, both candidates have agreed to the finalized rules. You ready? Microphones will be muted when it's not a candidate's turn to speak. May I suggest <laughs> you mute them when both of them speak? Yes. Is yes. it too late to suggest things can we actually uh mute them but get some microphones on melania and douglas her husband douglas he'll be crying like a little bitch when she gets insulted and and, and melania is going to be muttering in estonian about how she could have married a baldwin brother 
Yeah, you can hear her eye rolls. Yeah. That's, that's what she'll be doing the whole time. Okay, they're not allowed to give uh, opening statements, or there won't be opening statements. Uh -huh. And then Trump won a coin flip, so he'll give the final two-minute closing statement. He likes that coin, good coin. The coin loves him. He won the coin toss. Is that he's your Trump claim, impression? He's claim he won that's the as deep as you're going to go into a Trump impression? Um, no, everyone does it, and I and I'm and I'm hearing myself trying to do Shane Gillis uh, yes. when I'm doing it. Uh, yeah, no, I can see him like heads, heads. I go first, tails. You go second. Learn that one as a kid. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's no live audience, which will be. Very weird when she's laughing like a maniac and uh, there's no audience there. <laughs> yeah. Just the sound of her maniacal laughter. Yeah, yeah. And then um, meanwhile, Democratic uh, Governor Tim Waltz and Ohio Republican J.D. Vance, the VPs, will battle it out uh, at the debate hosted by CBS on October 1st in New York City. I love this. I love that they think we give a shit. Is anybody voting based on the VP nominee? No, nobody. We don't give a shit. So I had this idea. I think it would be really fun just to handicap it. Each party gets to pick the other party's nominee. Just, just for fun. <laughs> like the Republicans would pick like, like Hunter Biden to run for the Democrat. And we have to run with him. He's our guy. Right. And then the Democrats would pick J.D. Vance to run for the Republicans. Right. No, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, well, you know, it's not far off. I remember my first like eye opening experience to like how politics can work and how it like kind of dirty politics. But I remember um, Jesse Jackson was one of one of the first black candidates, definitely in the modern age. Uh, and he was going to run for Demo on the Democrat. Democratic ticket. <clears throat> he was going to go in the primaries and stuff. And he started, he was kind of like everywhere. And I'm like, I remember thinking like, God, he's really high profile. I'm so, I wonder like where he's getting all this money. Turns out Republicans were funding him. They loved that he was in the mix over on the Democratic side. Oh, no shit. I should say Democrat side. Yes that he was on the Democrat side, it was messing them up. And it's kind of like what you're saying. Like, yeah, we'll pick someone for you. Here you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think they, we, wait, was he, he was the Democratic candidate or he was the, he was the third party candidate? I, I remember it as being Democrat. Because I, I know they've be also funded, like, uh, I think when Ross Perot ran, I think they felt like he would drain Democratic votes. So they, so the Republicans started funding him. Oh, and I'm sure Nader, Nader really screwed things yeah, up for the Democrats right, right. running independent. And I, and I bet they funded his campaign for sure. Um, Dickie actually sent me a, uh, a Twitter thing today. The DNC will be, this is this morning, Saturday morning. The DNC will be flying banners over multiple college football stadiums today, trolling Trump, including a reminder to Michigan fans that Vance loves Ohio State. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to this Florida story. New College of Florida's College of Florida. I never heard of the College of Florida. The uh, library dean was terminated after an internal investigation found she purged thousands of books without following proper procedures. The college's legal and human sources team informed uh, the, the, the Shannon Housinger that she was terminated for tossing out what she described as moldy and water damaged books, which are public property without consulting college administrators. So miraculously... The oldest books in the library, the Old Testament and Mein Kampf in pristine condition. Yes. And then what she said about the others is, listen, they were moldy. They were damaged. They were trans. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all those old books on trans and gay yeah, issues. Yeah, they were yeah. so old. Yeah, right, right. Somehow they got wet and moldy. Um What's this? We got a Florida. Still. We got a lot of Florida today. More Florida. And we have a Florida man later, which is a perfect Florida man. Um, but I love this story. Body cam footage shows drunk Florida mayor failing field sobriety test. The footage captured the mayor trying to distance herself from her title, 
telling cops, don't call me the mayor, as she struggled <laughs> to keep her balance during a field sobriety test after she allegedly ran over a neighbor's mailbox. <laughs> Teresa Heitman, the mayor of Naples, that's not a small city, was seen attempting to perform sobriety test Wednesday sobriety tests Wednesday evening after she was caught driving with a blood alcohol level over twice the legal limit. Damn. This is the best part. A man is heard telling 911 dispatch Jesus. A man is heard telling 911 dispatchers over the phone. I think the mayor is drunk and she just she just literally oh she just ran over our mailbox. <laughs> You know, she's actually the opposite of people that like flex their power when they're drunk. Yeah. You know, like it's sort of a little like the I'm the captain now type thing or whatever. Yeah. And it's like she's like, don't call me by my title. Yeah. Do you know who I am? Good. Don't tell anybody. Yeah. Now, it's like meanwhile, I mean, Marion Barry was like a mailbox. Big fucking deal. I smoked crack with a prostitute on camera and yeah. I got reelected. Don't sweat it. You're fine. That was unbelievable. Wasn't that insane? Remember Chris Rock's line about it? What was it? He's like, you can't no one you can't do the normal job. You can't get caught smoking crack. If you get caught smoking a crack at Wendy's, you don't get your you don't keep your job yeah, at yeah. Wendy's. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. Well, I mean, the same is true where if you're convicted of a felony, you can't work a lot of jobs as well. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy All Jackson. Right. Oh, this is you. Jeremy Jackson, the actor who played Hasselhoff's son on Baywatch, admits he smelled female co-stars dirty swimsuits when they weren't around. Yes, he going did. Through, going through puberty on Baywatch was painful, Jackson, who's now 43, <laughs> said. I was too young to hook up with the chicks, but old enough to want to. Jackson joined the show when he was only 10 and spent his entire teenage years on set alongside, get this, Bombshells like Pamela Anderson, Carmen Electra, Yasmin Bleeth, Donna Diarico, and Nicole Eggert. Ugh. Um, the, listen, That's the, the Mount part, Rushmore of hot in the 80s. And it's not like you're just working with hot actresses. You're working with hot actresses with camel toes at every turn because yeah. those, those Baywatch bathing suits were preposterous. Yeah. Yeah, and... Uh, Look, if I was 14, 15 years old, I would have had those swimsuits wrapped around my face like I was in Al-Qaeda. Right. I, would, only, have, I yeah. would have been bumping into walls, just huffing that shit. The only part of this story I don't get is him telling somebody about this. Yeah. I mean, crazy. Um, all right, here's here's one the more thing, part. though. Yeah. Yes. He was, he was sniffing and licking Pam Anderson's pustril. He was also getting a tongue full of Tommy Lee's cum shot that was drooling out okay. from the night before. Now, I mean, just know what, know what you're getting into, kid. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So uh, the, I can't imagine being 14 and spending every day like that. And I was wondering if it messed him up. Next paragraph in the story. Uh, he started abusing drugs during his final year on the show and eventually became addicted to crystal meth. <laughs> <laughs> That's the huffing. And also huffing. you left out the part where he played the son of David Hasselhoff's character. So there's his father figure. Him, him and Huff, they would have amazing stories if either one of them could remember any of the stories. Exactly. But that uh, said, it's a gateway drug. When you're huffing, when you're huffing Bathing suit crotches, it's a slippery slope. It, it leads is. right to crystal meth. It is. I know. All right, we going to entertainment? Let's do some entertainment. All right, what is this? Anna Delvey is forced to wear an ankle monitor. In what would, uh, uh, quote, in what way would it affect my performance, the convicted con artist said of wearing the bracelet while competing. Anna Delvey said she's ready for some fun and a workout after joining the cast of the upcoming season of Dancing with the Stars. Wow. Star. Delvey is recognized as the convict, convicted fraudster whose exploits were reported in a New York Magazine article, The Fake German Heiress, reportedly conned various Manhattanites into giving her hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash, goods, and services. The story was then dramatized for Netflix's Inventing Anna. 
Uh, yeah, that so, was great. quote, when asked what prompted her to join ABC's reality dancing competition, Delvey admitted she was persuaded to join and then was granted permission from the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. She was released from prison in 2021 after serving four years, but has since been on house arrest while fighting her deportation case. Jeez. Dancing with the stars, more like limping with the stars. They should give her another one just so she can click them. Like, shouldn't she yeah. incorporate that in her yeah, little yeah. Uh, routine? Yeah, because if she's getting spun around somebody's head, the balance is going to be thrown off. But, I mean, look, she's a fucking con artist. By the end of this competition, she will be driving Alfonso Ribeiro's Porsche and wearing Kevin Hart's watch. Just watch. You'll see. Also, won't this be confusing to customs because uh, all of a sudden she'll be read like completely missing. They can't find her because if you're on this show, you are nowhere. (laughs) You are officially (laughs) nowhere. I can remember when this show first came out, it was such a big deal. Like it was really good. And there was like the one legged dancer. Was it who was it? The one legged dancer. I don't know, but they also kind of had stars. Wasn't it Paul McCartney's ex with the one leg? Did she do it? I think she did it. Wow. Jeff Ross did it. I remember that. And then he got hurt. He just told this story recently. He got hurt. Uh, Didn't he have an eye patch on? Oh, I don't remember that. I think he had an eye patch. So he looked like a dancing pirate. (laughs) Um, But he got really hurt. I'm trying to remember... It was like a kind of funny story. I, I don't remember it. But yes, and he was eliminated the first week, I think. Oh, my God. All right. So I saw that Zach Brown's estranged wife says he asked for a divorce nine days after their wedding party, and he did so over Zoom. I mean, country oh. songs about heartache sure are changing. I'll tell you that. Yeah. yeah. Um, she said, after he told me that he wanted a divorce, I refused to sign a non-disclosure agreement that would have pro- that would have broadly prohibited me from ever talking about my life or relationship with Zach for the rest of my life. And after I refused to sign that lifetime NDA, that is when Zach filed for divorce back in January. And then a couple of weeks later, I was fired from my position as executive vice president of his company. She claimed that when Brown used their wedding party video with alterations and without my consent for commercial gain and to attack her integrity. uh, Oh, that's when she did all that. She said that Brown then sued her for a poem she wrote and asked for an emergency restraining order against her, claiming she was violating a confidentiality clause in her employment agreement with the company. Jesus. So she had, so he had, a, he wanted an NDA on a personal level. And then she also had an NDA as an officer of the company. So. Yeah. And he's uh, claiming maybe the one of the company covered everything. Well, I found the poem. I did a deep dive and I found the poem that she wrote that got her in all the trouble. Zach is fat. His kid's a brat. He's a country music poser. I'm not signing a non-disclosure. And that you beautiful. can see it's beautiful, it's flowery, it's good meter, but you can see where that would really kind of tick him off a little bit. Well, George and Tammy, they are not. That's what we're learning here. I mean, right. I'd like a little more artful uh, relationship destruction. I think we'd all appreciate that. Well, I guess the wedding, he used the wedding video in a music video, and I don't know what he altered, but somehow she she took umbrage about him taking the personal moment in their life and using it for commercial uh, purposes. It's a little fucking weird. And now I want to see the video. I know. Um, All righty. All right, this is good. This is good. Elton John reflects in his new documentary on a drug binge with John Lennon that caused him to panic. The Rocket Man singer revealed that he and John once had mountains of coke coming out of their noses in a wow. New York City hotel room at 2 a.m. John admitted he was being paranoid at the time and even asked, is that the police? When he heard a knock at the door. It <laughs> took about five minutes to walk across to the peephole, and I saw... It was Andy Warhol. When John informed Lennon it was Warhol and not the cops, the imagined singer allegedly wanted to still shoo away the visual artist. They didn't want to let in Warhol because he carried his Polaroid camera everywhere and they wanted their drug use not to be documented. 
Lennon reportedly then said, like, no thanks. That was the fun part of cocaine. This is the <laughs> fucking coolest night ever. You know, I mean, you just think about these moments. Like, and I think about my Coke stories, like standing in a bathroom stall with Dudley at Father's 2, doing bumps of low grade <laughs> college Coke with a key to a bike lock. You know? But meanwhile, though, they go, that was the fun. None of this sounds fun. They're both <laughs> crazy paranoid. <laughs> and then Elton John is having like a panic attack. And I know what the panic attack was about. The panic attack was all of a sudden he's like, you're right. My li- you're right, John. My lyrics are shit. <laughs> they make they make no sense. They, what am yeah. I even doing in the same room as you? Right, right. Crocodile Rock. What happened to me? What the fuck is Crocodile Rock? It's, cr- it's it's amazing. I'm pulling this shit off. Why am I writing love songs to women in all my songs? I'm a homosexual. I mean, he has me leaving the penthouse to go back to the farm. It's the last thing I want. I'm getting more boy tail than a toilet seat up in that penthouse. That's not happening at the farm. All right, speaking of marshes, let's go to Florida. Here we go, Florida, man. I love this. Uh, this is a great Florida, man. Flor- Here's the first few words of the headline. Florida man attacks police dog, threatens deputies. Here we go. Matthew Mead, 38, requested to speak with a sergeant to, quote, make sure law enforcement is on the same page as me to ensure he wouldn't be pulled over for a suspended license. And then I don't even know what this next part means. Mead told the sergeant that the deputies had two seconds to step away from his vehicle before he would fire a bullet through his door. But according to the report, no deputies were there. Okay. Well, you know, maybe he was, he was like, maybe he's doing some Coke with Elton John. It sounds like he's imagining the police. Yeah. Maybe he would have shot Andy Warhol. Mead made a post on Facebook tagging the sheriff's office saying it's official extortion is going to meet bullets fuck that driver's license warning to pigs make contact get shot (laughs) on wednesday on wednesday evening deputies attempted to pull over mead outside his punta gorda home but he wouldn't stop so they blew out the his front tire using stop sticks a police dog was sent to his vehicle to detain mead following a series of failed stun gun attempts (laughs) When he began, stun gun won't bring him down. So they send in the dog. And when he began striking the, and he began striking the dog with a chair, the report said he grabbed the dog's collar and harness, putting the dog into a headlock. Deputies said Meade refused to release the animal, but then eventually walked the dog towards officials and let him go. (laughs) The arrest report also revealed Meade's previous run-ins with the law, including threatening more authorities with statements about having a shootout if a cop showed up or, quote, blowing their faces off in reference to blaming deputies for getting him fired. Mead also fled from deputies and was found to be in possession of marijuana. Marijuana? (laughs) Are you sure? This sounds like every drug except marijuana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, marijuana I, people don't get dogs and headlocks. No, I think they should make marijuana legal in Florida just to mellow these fucking lunatics out a little bit. Yeah. And by the way, what kind of a police dog was this that he got it in a head? What was it, a Labradoodle? You know, don't use snuggly dogs as, as police animals. How embarrassing how embarrassed is the dog's face as it's in a headlock being walked back <laughs> to its trainer yeah. and fellow like law enforcement. Right. Like, so, sorry, guys. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's uh, I mean, the guy, maybe the guy had a lot of charm. Dogs are funny like that, though. I've, I see dudes stare down dogs and and yell at them and vicious fucking dogs like chill out. And then I'm the opposite. I get scared around dogs. Dennis's old dog, remember that old uh, lab that he had, that beautiful yeah. lab? 
I swear to God, I went up to the paddle tennis courts one day and he was in the court. Oh, no, no, the golden. He had a golden. A golden. And I got nervous and the thing fucking growled at me. And Dennis is like, what the fuck? He's like, he never does that. No, and he would say he does it at crazy people. And I'm not making that up. Really? Yeah, Leland did not handle mentally ill, which Dennis, we won't say which street he lives on, but let's say there's no shortage of mentally ill in that part of Venice. Including Dennis. And Leland did, does, did not handle that energy well at yeah. all, which is good for Leland in a way. Yeah. But yeah. it also included you. Maybe Leland could tell how many meds you're on. All right. All right. All right. We're going to make Texas, Florida. Let's Here we do go. Let's do it. Texas, Florida. Texas man Hector Medina admitted he schemed to extract money from George Santos and other high-profile criminal defendants, including that 70s show actor Danny Masterson, in exchange for efforts to get their cases dropped. The 37-year-old who was arrested in March sent texts, images, and videos to Santos and others falsely claiming he could arrange for the former congressman's charges to be dropped in exchange for a large sum. If you're interested, I can get everything dropped, he said, Um, and even sent Santos and others a fake photo ID to be more convincing, and he hoped to use the proceeds of the scam to settle $100,000 $100,000 in gambling debts. Uh, so, okay. Ma- so Medina pleaded guilty on August 19th to wire fraud and identity theft, which ironically are the same charges against Santos <laughs> that garnered his December 2023 expulsion yeah. from Congress. Yeah, you Santos, can't play a player. Don't play a player. Yeah, Santos like, I know this hustle. <laughs> and by the way, what did he offer Danny Masterson? Like, I can make these women, I can make these victims go away? Yeah. How do you get out of multiple rape charges? Now, this is like trying to sell drugs to a drug dealer. Like, these are the guy. (laughs) Fucking, he's the guy. Santos is the king. I mean, look, this guy, he was a senator. Was he a senator or a congressman? Senator, I think. Oh, no, no, congressman. Congressman Congressman. Long Island. Man, he hung in there for a while. That was yeah. that was a wild ride, watching him not get ex, uh, expelled from Congress. And for him not to have any shame about everything he was consistently caught, dead to rights, like just caught in lie after lie in criminal behavior. Yeah, and he was this anti-gay politician who was caught in dresses. He was a fucking cross-dresser. He Drag was the best. down in Brazil at Carnival. Yeah. All right, a little quick sports. Here we go. Let's do sports. It's a very busy sports week. I I talked to you before the podcast. You didn't see it. Boy, it's worth going to watch the last play on YouTube of KC Baltimore and Baltimore's, I can call it a touchdown pass. It was a touchdown pass for about... uh, 30 seconds, and then it was, the play was reviewed with zero time on the clock. And uh, no, we won't spoil it. For those who haven't seen it, go look at it. But let's just say a half an inch at most decided the game. I mean, It was crazy. And are people arguing uh, that it was a catch still? No one. I don't, clear. Be- I don't, believe, any- I don't believe anyone is. Okay. Um, but, uh, and then we have... The finals of the U.S. Open, which is women play today, Saturday, men play tomorrow, and both of them have an American in yeah. it, and I'm wondering the last time that was the case. Women women have had Americans in the finals way more than men, of, you know, in the last 20 years. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, Coco Goff, I think, won it last year. And of course, the Sir, the Williams sisters. I was going to say yeah. the Serena sisters, the um, Williams also, sisters, and everything. Also, um, my football pool starts this week. I got New Orleans. I got Tampa. I'm picking bad, bad teams because in the first week, if you get knocked out, you can buy your way back in again. So this way, if I pick a bad team, my my slate is that much better going into the rest of the season, even though it costs me a little bit of money. Gotcha. And um, college football front started last week. We were in a bar. Oh, in Dorchester, that bar I told you about. Dorchester, the dot. Because Laura was staying down by the seaport, and she had one of George's relatives uh, who lives in South Boston, which is hot now. 
And um, so we went to this sports bar, which was terrible. Like DJ, just cra- you couldn't even hear a goddamn thing. So anyway, boy, you know, we have my daughters in Michigan. My niece is in Oregon. Those two teams did not play well. And Michigan is getting their ass handed to them right now by Texas. And the worst part is they have Matthew McConaughey in the big house in Ann Arbor. And he's just, he's just, he literally looks like he's more over the top than a styrofoam mascot, you know, that's wearing a big outfit. Yeah. He's there with his cowboy hat and his leather, brown leather jacket and his sunglasses and just, you know, pouring the Texas act drawl on thick. He's embarrassing. Jesus. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't do. I can't do it. I I, I can I stick to pro sports. I'm not. I can't do the college thing. It's just too much and, turnover. And Tom Brady, my boyfriend, is not joining me at the Emmys where he could win his first. I think it's his first Emmy tonight because he's in Cleveland. He just he went to Michigan, so they just talked to him during halftime. But he starts his job tomorrow as a Fox announcer. I am going to predict. That he's a bad announcer and that he wins the Emmy. Those are my two predictions. I like half of that. Maybe I like both of them. But he's you know what he's got to watch the most? And Tony Romo, I thought, was great at this. And and McEnroe. All the greats put themselves aside. You know what yes, I mean? Yes. And it's hard to do because sometimes you'll you'll tell a story that ultimately is self-deprecating or is giving even more credit to the person you're watching. But the problem is it still comes across as you talking about you. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yep. But Brady is so critical of football today and that it'll be interesting to watch him try to walk that line. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. Let's cut down to... Uh, this day in history this day in history let's do it okay i remember seeing a couple here it's always tricky always tricky all right here we go we got you have read a lot about the french and the revolution and all that but this Mm. isn't the french revolution but of all their their uprisings paris was attacked by joan of arc on this day, in what year? French heroine Joan of Arc, a peasant girl who believed she was acting under divine guidance, those are the worst kind of leaders, attempted to oust the Duke of Burgundy and take Paris for newly crowned King Charles VII. Oof. Give or take 80 years. What year was this? Um, yes, I've read a lot of French history and Joan of Arc. I'm going to go 1560. 1429. Oh, your 161 year window I gave you. Damn. You failed it. Okay. Um, let's see. Let me find some interesting ones here. Mark McGuire of the St. Louis Cardinals broke Roger Maris's 1961 record for the most home runs in regular professional baseball season by hitting his 62nd of the season, and he finished with 70 home runs. Give or take four years, what year did Mark disgraced Mark McGuire pull off this feat? I think I was just out of college. I'm going to go 92. You are not doing well today. 1998. Damn. The Shit. psychological thriller Psycho, directed by Alfred Hitchcock, and based, I didn't know this, on real-life serial killer Ed Gein. Really? Was, I did not know that. was released huh. in American theaters. It became a classic, especially known for the scene in which Janet Lee's character is murdered in the shower. So, give or take... Five years. I'm going to make it. I would not have given you five, but I'm giving you five now. What year did Psycho come out? I can't even remember if it was black and white. I don't think it was black and white because it was blood going down the drain when she gets stabbed in the shower. I'm going to say 1966. I love it. 1960. And it was black and white, I believe. Oh, shit. 
Okay. Uh, Jesus. Are, 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 do you not even have today. a single win? God damn, no, I don't have any. Give me another one. I'm going to give you one with 150, give or take. Okay. 150 year, give or take. Yeah. Michelangelo's The David was unveiled in the Piazza della Signoria in Florence. Florencia. It's considered a masterpiece. The sculpture is one of the defining works of the Renaissance, give or take 150 years. What year did that fucking stud appear? Sixteen twenty. You got it. Fifteen oh four. It's the most pathetic win ever. <laughs> okay. And last you know what's one. really sad is I listen to audiobooks every night and I pick the most boring biographies I can find. And I've listened to so much French history, Italian history. I literally listen to a Da Vinci book, a Michelangelo book, and I still don't know the fucking year. Last one. Marxist revolutionary Mao Zedong, Mao, who died Mao. this, he died on this day um, in what year? And he was uh, the undisputed Chinese Communist Party leader following the long march and dominated China in the period after the communist takeover. Boy, I had to, av- I had to avoid a ton of dates in there, years. So give or take 10 years, when did Mao die Mao, i remember lived a long time and so i'm gonna say 1972 you see we end on a high note 1976 nice there we go you're back you're all back. right all right letters to the editor crinkle okay here we go this is from brian Rischel. Uh, Hey, Greg, thanks for releasing the first Sunday Papers episode again. Crazy to think that was almost five years ago. At the time, I was living alone in an apartment, just started a new job, had been dating my girlfriend for about a year. We're now married, own a home together, and I'm still loving my job. I've listened to every Sunday Papers episode, and and I've been a Fitz Dog listener for a decade. The new special is fantastic. I've watched it twice already. Hopefully, you come back to Omaha soon. Uh, okay. Well, that's very nice. You Uh, are going to, oh no, you're going to Tulsa. Yeah. Come to Tulsa. Not that far. Um, and I was just in Omaha, by the way. No. For what? When I drove Sophie to Michigan. Oh, I wasn't there long. I'd say 21 minutes. I love Omaha and I love Lincoln. They're real. It's a really fun area. We ate lunch in Lincoln. So, uh, that's where we stopped. Yeah, it's a college town. They got all different kinds of restaurants. They got a great theater there. And our and our old friend Ross Broccoli lives there. And I told you that great story because, you know, the uh, Warren Buffett famously lives there driving his probably shitty Ford or whatever he drives. Um, one of the richest men in the world. And I remember Rabi, our good friend, his family, his wife, his, his in-laws are from Omaha. And so he, around Christmas time, sent me this picture and it was the weirdest picture. It was just like the popcorn stand at a theater. And I'm like, yeah, great. You're going to the movies, you know, on December 22nd, big deal. And he's like, look idiot. And so one of the guys online, you had to like, you know, weave through these uh, ropes to get up to uh, order your popcorn. There's goddamn Warren Buffett alone standing in line wow. going going up to buy his popcorn and undoubtedly his coca-cola which he has been the biggest investor of uh historically he apparently drives himself in his little ford or a honda or whatever Not and a, i doubt it's a honda drives to work stops at mcdonald's on the way to work every day and he buys either uh an egg mcmuffin or there's like something else he buys and it depends on whether or not his stocks are up that morning. Right. Yeah. I know, right. I saw I saw that clip. He's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, it's like I want my kids to follow his life and go like, you know, because they're both making decent money, like waiting tables, but like it's too much money and they just get takeout and they eat out and they go to bars and spend money. It's like, you guys don't understand, like, you got to learn how to say, and that, you know, just not that you won't make more money later, but like, you just got to get in the habit of not spending everything you earn. 
And it's the day in, day out spending too. Like that's what he focuses yep. on, you know? Like, I mean, not that he needs to, but like it's the principle of it. You know, there's a movie, this is going to be frustrating for listeners, except the one that might know this. There's some political movie, and I forget what it is, and he's depicted, he's not referred to as Warren Buffett, but I remember the, the, our hero, meanwhile, I'm, I'm teaching this writing class at USC again, so now this is how I talk. This hero who has obstacles, one of the obstacles he, is, he has is he has to go to this small town and he sits in a, the most modest kitchen you've ever seen and it's an old man and an old woman and the woman like puts pie down or whatever it is and then leaves and then they're left to talk business. But it was remarkable. What happens is you're not like intimidated by Warren Buffett, like listen to the stories we just told, but this meeting, which had to be based somewhere in truth, but like he's not where he is because he's soft. You know what I yeah, mean? Right. He is ruthless in deal making. Yeah. And this movie depicted it so well. And I'm forgetting, I can almost remember who played him. But anyway, write in if you remember this scene that was loosely based, I think, on Warren Buffett and how he had this guy cornered every which way. There was no out negotiating him, and it was so impressive. All right. Mike Gibbons is home. It is time to order koozies. We got a few left in the bag. Uh, go to fitzdog.com. You can find the link and then you just send them $10 through Venmo. Like literally no shipping and handling, 10 bucks to your door and he's on top of it right now. So get yourself I'll a I'll be on top of it this fall. week. I'd say I'm about 10 behind because I haven't been home for a That's couple of bad. weeks. That's not bad. Yeah. So a little behind and there's some cartoon winners also. I got to go dig up their uh, addresses. So they're coming. They're coming. I Let's get to the saddest part of the show, the obituary. The funnies. No, the obituary. <laughs> and that's all, folks. Well, this happened on July 13th, but we didn't cover it. And, you know, Greg and I uh, are well aware. You've probably met him, Greg. I never met him. No, really? I wish I had. Yeah. Richard Simmons, the energetic, frizzy-haired TV personality and fitness coach who made exercise accessible to millions and then became reclusive in recent years. He died July 13th. And, you know, we're not going to go on about him. You can look him up. And hopefully there's going to be a movie about him soon. So you'll learn all about him. Well, Paulie Shore has been vying for that role for years. I think he even might have shot like a reel. I think he did. Yeah, of him playing. I mean, he looks like him. He can capture that spirit. Paulie would be amazing. But I think he's, uh, I don't think he was able to make contact with, I think Richard Simmons basically passed on the idea. But now that he's gone, maybe Paulie can go ahead and do it. I don't know. I don't know how these things work. Do you have to like buy the rights to somebody's life to do a biopic or can you just do it? I think you should buy him, especially after you're responsible and you're accused of killing him, which Paulie <laughs> probably did. Um, hey, I, buddy. Want to come over for a barbecue, buddy? So Richard Simmons was this incredibly vulnerable, positive, 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 positive. I remember him telling a story or was in his autobiography like that. Uh, he was so ashamed of being overweight that he used to shower with a raincoat on, which is a little weird. Like, don't oh you want to get wet? But I never questioned that story. But he used to wear a coat because he couldn't stand the chance of seeing his naked body in the mirror. And then one day, like a Tony Robbins thing, he just decided to turn it around. And then it was like almost like a cult following um, and was so positive. And the reason we're talking about him today probably is because um, Howard Stern and David Letterman both latched on to him because they could be critical and try to sort of take a bit of the air out of his balloon when he was just like in like nonstop positive. Like yeah. you could not shake his positivity and boy, did they try. 
Yeah, and he would flirt with Letterman, which was hilarious. He would tell him he was cute. He would try to touch him, and Letterman was constantly pushing his hand off of him. It was it he was called, classic that, Letterman. Letterman snapped at him. Look for that. There's a clip on YouTube. Get away from me! You it was like it was like get away from me, you freak. It yeah. was something like that that made it over the airwaves yeah. on CBS because I think he kept trying to hug Letterman. Yeah. Um, it's really yeah funny. i love that guy how do you not love that guy he was the best i know i miss him uh, all right let's, funnies let's here we go cheer up let's cheer up <laughs> okay La two weeks ago we gave you a comic strip uh from our my friend bob Eckstein, who's a new yorker cartoonist and he was nice enough to send us some of his original work if you didn't see it it's uh the burger king smoking a cigarette under the covers laying next to uh, Ronald McDonald, who also has a cigarette in his mouth. And they look post-coital. I mean, I can't, I don't, I don't know. Looks like, you know, that's what you usually do when you have a cigarette and you're no, in bed they with did somebody. It. So uh, we did get a number of submissions that were similar. So if yours didn't get in, I just kind of picked the early one and put it in. I might have ignored the ones that came in later because they were redundant. Um, and then uh, some might have come in later. Again, the cutoff for these usually is Thursday before we tape. And uh, Nick Glancy said, maybe we should have waited for Wendy to get here before we started. That's I really good. like that one. Uh, Larry Z said, corporate espionage takes a turn when the king asked Ronald to show him how the Big Mac special sauce is made. Yeah, a little wordy up top, but I like it. Joel Bianco said, "I just wish you wouldn't have mentioned. I I just wish you would have mentioned the McWarts. W oh, would have. <laughs> okay, yeah." David Munn said, "I know I said have it your way, but I wasn't loving it." <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, Elk uh, Dallas from Elk Grove, California said. When I said you could have it your way, Ronnie, I didn't know Happy Meals came in that size. Happy Meal toys. Toys came. Oh, Happy Meal toys. Sorry, Dallas. I butchered your punchline. Tony McNeil said, now that that's over, <laughs> let's see if Wendy can make a sandwich. <laughs> uh, Richard Kennedy said, uh, I didn't mind when you said I'm going to spread my special sauce between your buns with my Whopper, but yelling out you're going to have it my way because I'm the king kind of hurts. Nice. It's too much. It's too much. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, Jeff said, uh, ba -da -da -da, I'm HIV positive. <laughs> Uh, quit your whining, you burger queen. The colonel used to eat my ass all the time. Yeah. I, I, I was hoping for something more clever than eat my ass. Like something like uh, secret, something about the secret ingredients or something. Yeah. Yeah. Ben Holger says, Ronnie, you know what the crown is? Ronnie, you know the crown is fused to my head. Could you try not blasting it with your special sauce? We got a lot what of special, special sauces. Sauce, yeah. Joe Banks said, I asked you to hold the pickle. That's good. I like that. Yeah. Sid Talk. Well, at least that was better than the time I ran into the five guys. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I love that one. Uh, All right. What do you like? I would say the finals would be... Um, I like the McWarts. I thought McWarts... I like McWarts. It sounds like Joel may have rejected the first few things that came to mind and, and, and went a little deeper. Yeah. Uh, I like to have it your way, but I wasn't loving it. It's pretty creative. There, there's This is the best round. I feel like it is. I'm HIV positive. I like five guys. I don't know. Should we make it random? Uh, I like five guys. We might have a little recency bias or whatever they call that since it's the last one. Let's go with five guys. But listen, honorable mentions all around. Yes, a lot of honorable mentions. And a lot, like I said, a lot of them were good that didn't make it in just because we had similar ones. So uh, thank you. Uh, this week's, and you can send in your jokes to fitsdogradio at gmail.com. And do me a favor, write the joke and then put your name right under it. That makes it so much easier for me. 
Uh, this is a gentleman in a suit. He is in a coffin. Uh, the bottom half is closed. The top half is open. You can see him. And there's two women, and one is pointing to him, and she's talking to the other woman. They're both in, you know, appropriate funeral garb. Yeah, this is not a layup. This does not. This is not like the Burger King and uh, McDonald. No, you're this, gonna have uh, to d- go deep on this one. Well, you have to create. You have to create this whole. I don't even know what this is. Yeah. Well, um, that's why they, they, they're good. Our listeners are good. They're f- very funny people. All right, am I doing Garfield now? Yeah, well, speaking of funny people. Are we funny only cats. down to number eight? Okay. Garfield is the cat. Garfield is there with another cat who probably everyone knows. Who the hell knows? Anyway, this is a blind read. I have not read this. There's three panels. The first panel, Garfield says, yep. Thinks. Oh, yeah, think. Thought bubbles. Oh, but they hear each other. They're thinking, but they seem to each hear each other. I think they're talking, Greg. Okay. And he goes, yep, I've eaten a lot of vertebrae. And the little gray cat goes, really? In the second panel, Garfield says, went back in time and ate an archaeopeptrix. The gray cat covers his mouth, eyes giant. Wow. Third panel, Garfield went to the North Pole once and ate a penguin. And the gray cat now has a dubious look on his face and goes, hey, wait a minute. And that's what I did. I waited a minute for the fourth panel, which would be a joke. And it never came, Jim Davis. It never arrived. Do you know how popular this comic strip is? It's, in, I mean, Garfield is huge. And this is one oh, of the Oh, it was a goddamn 10? movie. Wow. Ridiculous. Crazy. Crazy. It's just ridiculous. All right, well, let's get to the, the, the light-hearted Hagger the Horrible. And we know why he's horrible. We don't need to get into it. Uh, he likes women. Uh, he gets to a castle. He's got a big ladder going up into the tower. And you can hear a voice from inside saying, Hagger, how dare you show your face again after raiding and plundering the castle? And now we see him looking in at, uh, a, at a queen whose hair is braided and she's scowling. And he goes, my wife wanted you to know that one of your dresses was a big hit at the village ball. You know... The dress I ripped off you last week when I <laughs> plundered the castle and killed your husband. <laughs> this is just the kind of lighthearted comics that you want little kids reading in the Sunday yes, paper. Of course. Look at her. So crazy that that's in the Sunday papers. She looks bigger than he is. Yeah, she looks pretty tough. That She's tough. Big, well, Helga's is not a, not a little lady. Uh, let's get to the Lockhorns. Uh, Leroy walks in the door. He's got his briefcase. He's drunk. Ty is undone. And he, go, he says to his wife, they promoted my intern over me. Oh, God. I want to come back from her, right? Yeah. I think sometimes they just kind of set the baseline for where he yeah, is like in his she career. She could have said, like, that took a longer than I thought or yeah. you know, something like right. that. Yeah. Or, like, usually your intern Not is much under- of a promotion. Usually your intern is under you. Not over you. Oh, oh. Uh, now we get another one where uh, there there is a bachelor party. There's posters up that says Steve's bachelor party. And it's a bunch of dudes. They're uh, they're they're in some kind of a party room, and uh, and a clown is popping uh, out of a out of a cake. Mm-hmm. And Leroy is tapping on his phone, and he goes, "I better call and see who showed up to my nephew's birthday party." <laughs> <laughs> not a good uncle no and finally oh my sweet sweet love blondie she's making a pie she's cutting it up right now daughter sitting at the table in what appears to be a negligee they really they give blondie a run for the money with that daughter she is pretty supple herself yeah, yeah. She says, Mom, happen. what's the secret of having a lifetime love like you and Daddy have? And Blondie says, well, two things. Number one is communication. And then Dagwood walks in and goes, you rang. Hmm, was and it then Lurch? 
the the daughter goes amazing but isn't daddy just reacting to the apple pie and blondie goes that's number two and 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 he's only looking at the pie and he goes yum um no only he is a number literal two. pies by the way with that guy all right no hair pies he and and, oh. and is that what you meant Yes, but no. I wouldn't say it. But well, that's the difference between us. I think that's part of our chemistry. Um, yeah. I just think it's incredible to me that anybody would ask marriage advice from Blondie. It's like, hey, how do you live with an alcoholic who beats you? Well, you just cook for him. How do you live with a slob who fails at work, has no muscular activity and sleeps his way through the only time you would have together. Never hits on you in bed. Well, I bake pies. Yeah. Mom, what's your secret for staying with a disinterested cuck? Yeah. Everyone wants to know. There's the most beautiful song called I'm Baking Pies. I'm Making Pies by Patty Griffin. You know Patty Griffin? I do, but I don't know the song. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's about a sad woman who's who's I think her husband died in the war. Uh, yeah. Greg, I would stay and chat with you, but I got to get to the Emmy Awards. Oh, good luck, my friend. We're all pulling for you. Uh, well, it's weird. It's a weird one. It's on the first weekend. So I guess it'll be there's it's not streaming. Yeah. Uh, and anyway, people are hearing this Sunday. So I'm either a winner or a loser. But we're up against three award shows, which is so ins- I mean, what the Oscars win an Emmy? It's it sounds wrong. So it's the Oscars, the Tonys, the Grammys, and then um, Usher roller skating for fifteen minutes. That's our competition. <laughs> I mean, we uh, l- listen. Last time I was here, did I say this at the top? I convinced we'd lose. We were up against Beyonce's Lemonade. It was Carpool Karaoke Primetime Special. I, this time I'm like. I don't know. I think I'll be a little resentful if just because of the competition. I'm not saying we're Emmy worthy, but the competition is certainly not. Well, I'm trying to think back. The Oscar host. But Jimmy Kimmel has a lot of friends. And this is a popularity contest. Oh, yeah. Your Kimmel friends are the ones it. who vote. Yeah, Kimmel. Does, I mean, look, Kimmel is our time's best Oscar host. I mean, Carson was the original one who was great. Billy Crystal was amazing, and uh, I feel like Kimmel has really stepped up and is and and is the guy. So that could be tough, but again, as I said earlier, you guys broke the mold. You did a live show that had killer ratings, that uh, launched some people, and uh, it went long, and people still watched to the end. That which is a tribute to it. And every other show is a repeat for that's that's on. It's like. 50 something year or more in the Oscars yeah. case. And then the halftime show, by the way, those cameras aren't even there for that event. They're right. all there for the game. And then some guy throws on roller skates. Meanwhile, if it was Rihanna, the year she did the halftime show hats off. I don't even think I'd be here. She deserved it. Well, listen, don't be bitter before you even, uh, don't win. Just, uh, you know, accept. <laughs> okay, I'll try. Good luck. Too late. Um, all right. Well, listen, uh, we're going to remind people, Game time, you can get yourself $20 off when you go when you download the app, put in code PAPERS, enjoy it, love it. Uh, we want to remind you to please check out my special. It's at Greg Fitzsimmons Comedy on YouTube. Leave a comment. That helps out a lot with the al- – we seem to be in the algorithm. We are just building up numbers, and uh, thank you guys for supporting it. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. It's time to take it ish. Let's take it ish. Uh, bye bye. Bye bye. I love my Sunday mornings. I I get a little tingling from your crinkling Sunday papers. Sunday papers. Sometimes, maybe we could do some shrooms. Or maybe a bagel from that place you used to talk about. And then maybe go to the beach. 
and just kind of hang out, you know? <laughs> <laughs>